Okay, so my screen is visible to everyone. Yes, sir. Yes. It is visible. Yes. Okay. Okay. So first of all, uh, you know, a warm welcome everyone to this webinar. So today we are going to discuss about the secure access service edge, that is the SASE. You know, so a journey towards your secure network transformation. Uh, you know, these days it is gaining market. Reason being that you know the cost is one of the driving factor then we have the uh, agility of the network expansion you know applications are going over the cloud so these are the multiple driving factors you know for, because of which sas is gaining market these days and in fact you know the overall security landscape has also increased due to which you know uh, your perimeter security is no longer sufficient or it's no longer effective to provide the secure network access to your employees as well as to your contractors or vendors, employees, I mean customers. So when we talk about this webinar, you know, so the agenda of this webinar is to discuss about the digital transformation, why there is a shift from traditional architecture to SASE architecture, right? And we will also discuss the SASE in deep dive mode, right? Uh, what are the industry use cases? How packets are flowing? You know how you can design your uh, custom SASE solution, you know, not you're just going with one particular OEM, but you can also uh, uh, go with multiple OEMs, integrate them together, right? And uh, we will also see the SSE capabilities and what are the options available from market, from vendors, right? And at last, I will take your questions and uh, we will have a QA session. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, agenda is clear to everyone, right? So now moving forward, you know, why there is a need for digital transformation for any organization? What are the key, you know, driving factors which are leading to digital transformation? So first of all is your internet, the new connectivity layer. You know, when we discuss about traditional net network architectures, we used to have MPLS as our core net, you know, connectivity layer. One branch office communicating with other branch office or headquarters it is done via mpls that was the traditional way of doing it but now these you know global cios ceos they are transforming their business architecture or they are transforming their network architecture you know and they are following this internet first strategy and cloud first strategy so these are the basic driving factor of digital transformation first of all is your internet connectivity layer Second is your cloud. Now cloud, you know, it is agile, scalable, highly collaborative. This is the second driving factor. Then third, we have mobility. Our workers are moving anywhere, right? For maximum productivity. Uh, we are not even confined to a particular space now, right? You can go anywhere, you can connect to any network and you can access your internal applications. You can work from anywhere, right? That is the third driving factor. Then we have the next layer of connectivity that is 5G, okay? So automation is increasing. If you talk about manufacturing industry, so your IT OT communication is increasing. So 5G is your next connectivity layer, which is driving this digital transformation. Now, when we talk about, uh, you know, this hybrid work environment where customers are connecting to your uh, internal applications, to your SaaS based applications, to your resources in the cloud, right? And your employees are also uh, connecting to these resources, these, uh, you know, uh, workloads in your cloud. How do you really secure this new world? Because it is, you know, uh, it is no longer uh, only confined to your work location now it is spreaded everywhere okay post pandemic users are working from uh, home working from cafes you know they are moving anywhere so generally you know we don't have any control now uh, earlier in traditional network architecture we used to connect the workforce to our vpn concentrators and then we used to give them the access of our internal applications but now this is not the case you know applications are moving over cloud we have saas based services right so users are connecting to these services over internet and uh, we don't have any security parameter or any security stack available to secure to uh, you know do the deep inspection on that particular communication so this is a very big challenge 
the uh, enterprises are facing today so as a overall solution you know sasi is not a um, i would say is not a solution it's a framework which combines multiple services together to solve this problem okay so when we talk about shift from traditional architecture to sasi architecture why it happened you know what was the root causes of this particular shift so when we talk about our legacy architecture so it used to be like this you know we used to have regional data centers our employees or you can say different different uh, workforce contractors vendors they used to either come to our office premises or they used to connect to our data centers with the help of remote access vpn adapters right or you can say uh, any other uh, clientless vpn service and then they used to access our internal applications and then these data centers were connected back to back with p2p links okay and uh, if uh, you need to go over internet so your traffic used to hit the local data centers then it used to route towards the uh, main data center where the entire security stack has been implemented you know it used to have the sandbox ssl decryption blade dlp blade antivirus blade url filtering blade firewall and ips uh, blade you know the overall management and deployment of these services was very expensive and you know you would need the dedicated workforce to handle this in fact you need more services like global load balancer ddos service external firewall and ips service remote access vpn concentration right internal firewall internal load balancer so these were the services you would need for outbound and inbound connections at your core data center locations so the solution was not effective it was not scalable and when pandemic came and all the users started working from home you know this solution like uh, stopped working all together reason being that these boxes vpn concentrators earlier they were not receiving so much load you know these inbound gateways outbound gateways but when your entire workforce moved from the office location to uh, you know remote or let's say they started working from their home the load on these concentrations you know have increased and due to due to which uh, we have noticed this severe degrade degradation in the services okay so that's the reason you know this uh challenge or you can say this problem resulted into the shift from the traditional architecture to the sasi based architecture right so when we discuss about new world how it is going to look like so it is going to look like that your customers your workforce your offices your data centers your services could be anywhere okay and how you are going to do the inspection on these packets you are going to do the inspection with the help of the cloud service providers or you can call them sac secure service edge right and uh, you can have other uh, you know parameters as well uh, to do the inspection i mean you know multiple options are available inline dlp is there casb is there firewall as a service is there zdn is there zero trust network access framework is also there right so when we talk about sasi sasi it's a framework which further divides into sd wan plus sse components which we are going to see in our upcoming slides so this new world transition happened and uh, due to which you know there was a requirement to shift from your traditional architecture towards the sasi based architecture now when you shifted from traditional architecture to sasi based architecture it reduced the cost it was easy to manage it you know helped in digital transformations it enabled the users to work from anywhere and securely right and it has also resulted in reduced number of cyber attacks you know so these were the offerings which you got from sasi architecture and post pandemic you know it forced entirely all the enterprises to move towards it right now you cannot just uh, sit behind and just you know talk about it not not going to implement implement it right if you are being being a cio or cxo in your company it is a you know urgent need to transform your network as soon as possible 
because attackers are gaining access to your networks they are stealing information there are multiple ways they are exploiting the uh, you know vulnerabilities in your traditional architectures and they are stealing your crucial information so now to get rid of all of these situations all of these challenges sas is the best solution to that now when we talk about secure access service edge you know earlier it used to be like uh, only secure access service edge used to you know um, talk about z scalar based services i mean sse based services only like palo alto prisma access netscope but later on gartner has revised this particular concept and now they have uh, included that sd wan is also part of this particular uh, transformation journey right so when you say secure access service edge you need to include sd wan these days as well right so what is happening now in sd wan if you are sitting inside the branch the users are getting the access to your internal applications with the help of this sd wan fabric and you are controlling all your design uh, all your devices from a cloud based controller okay so sd wan has given you the uh, you can say the uh, ability to securely transfer your data over internet by using ipsec tunnels okay so basically we do uh, what we are going to do we are going to have these sd wan devices on our branches we are going to remove every other branch every other device in the branch right what what your topology is going to look like your lease lines will be terminated directly on these sd wan boxes and then you have your lan environment no need to implement any security stack there just have plain sd wan boxes okay then your traffic is going to hit the sd wan boxes from the branch lan and then it will travel over these sd wan fabric towards your data center locations be it on premise or cloud this is your sd wan being managed from cloud controllers on premise controllers we have multiple flavors available in this as well now comes your sse part that is your secure service edge so basically this has given you the secure access to your internal applications but what about your local internet breakout your saas application access you know which is going to happen over internet so how you are going to secure that so you need a cloud service provider which can provide you that service which can help you to uh, you know do the deep inspection on your packets so when we talk about secure service edge so it is like a purpose built multi tenant service where you know you are you are going to get multiple data centers across the globe your branches will be connected to these data centers your internet based traffic your uh, saas based traffic or your work from home user based traffic will, is going to hit these particular data centers now these data centers are going to do the deep inspection on your packets right and then securely forward it towards the destination be it internet your internal applications your b2b communication so this is what sasi is you know the combination of sd wan component and sse component that is your secure service edge now when we talk about your secure service edge capabilities you know what all capabilities sse has today so you have got url filtering you have got anti malware service you have got sandboxing you have got uh, dlp service you have got ssl decryption you know uh, back back then we have seen that uh, all these blades we need to have it in our main data center right and then management uh, used to be very tough but these days you need not to spin any blade or any sort of box on premise you just need to take the subscription from these cloud service providers okay so users can be anywhere they can work from office they can work from home right and they can connect to these particular uh, sses with the help of the respective traffic forwarding method whatever your enterprise has defined for you and then you can securely access your saas applications your internet applications so what do you get from the sse you get protection you get visibility and control and compliance okay so all these things you get from your sse vendors so when we talk about sse vendors we have zscaler we have palo alto prisma access we have netscope and many other but these three are you know like market leaders as per the gartner's latest report then when we talk about sasi solutions availability right 
So at present, you can get this SA solution from one single OEM, right? They are offering the complete SA solution. So you can go with Cisco, Cisco SD WAN and Umbrella service. It is a complete SAS offering from Cisco, right? Then you have Palo Alto Prisma SD WAN plus Prisma Access. Then we have VMware Velo Cloud SD WAN plus Velo Gateway, Fortinet SD WAN plus Fortinet Gateway, and then Versa SD WAN plus Versa Gateway. I mean, these are the well known uh, OEMs which are selling their SAS solutions these days. There is one miss, uh, I mean, I, I would not say misconception, but there is one more thing which people are talking about today. It's like, you know, uh, SAS on a particular edge device itself. So, when I say SASE on a particular SD device, it means if we go back, if we go back to this particular SD WAN slide, here you will see we have this particular box. Let me take the laser. So here you will see this particular SD WAN box. You know what people are saying? Let's take SASE complete SASE offering in this box itself. It means this box is able to do SD WAN functionalities as well as this box is able to provide you the SSC capabilities. But I would not, uh, you know, 100% agree to it because all the SSC capabilities you cannot get within a box itself, right? Because dedicated data centers are having high compute power to do, uh, you know, to do, to offer all these services at a higher compute level, you know, which you cannot get it within a box itself, right? Although these days vendors are selling you uh, solutions like that only. I mean, if you talk about 14 net, so they are giving their 14 net SD WAN plus, uh, you know, uh, UTP licenses. So if you merge them, uh, they say it is a SASE offering. So you need not to integrate with any Z scaler or any other SASE provider. You get it within the box itself. But this, that offering is not like, uh, you know, it's not a complete SASE solution because. Uh, when you enable the deep inspection on it, uh, no problem. You can do that, but you know you get you get limited with the signatures. So when we talk about signatures, so see the convergence happened like that. Few security providers, you know, uh, like Palo Alto, Checkpoint, Cisco, they realize that industry is migrating from traditional WAN towards the SD WAN. Similarly, the SD WAN providers realize that. Industry is moving from traditional security to cloud based security. Now the, these vendors, they started adding up these features within their products, right? If you recall earlier, we used to get, uh, you know, a new box for a new service. I mean, if you recall Cisco, Cisco used to give you a box for a service like for authentication. We used to have eyes. For uh, web security app, app, uh, filtering, we used to have WSA boxes. Email security, you have email security boxes like that, right? Uh, URL filtering boxes and all those stuff. So they started converging these features into a single box, and this journey started from there. Okay, so Palo Alto realized that being a security provider, they won't be able to compete in the market. Won't be able to compete in the market if you if they don't have any SD WAN solution with them. They even tried to offer the SD WAN functionality inside their firewalls, but that didn't work. So ultimately, they have to, uh, you know, acquire the CloudJerix SD WAN offering, and then they relaunched it as Prisma SD WAN. Okay. So similarly, you know, Cisco realized that uh, uh, this Miraki solution is not going to work. Then they acquired uh, Viptela. Then they modified the Viptela uh, operating system. Multiple changes they have made. Similarly, Zscaler is also trying to build its own SD WAN solution, but they are not able to do do that reason because you know uh, they they are not getting any uh, SD WAN OEM or you can say the SD WAN uh, startup company which they can acquire, and mostly all other. Uh, Competitors are way ahead of Zscaler in terms of SD WAN. I mean, Zscaler is also trying, but uh, uh, it is nowhere close to the competition. So the race is towards like a complete solution from a single OEM so that they can also double their business, right? So let's take an example. If I'm uh, selling Palo Alto Firewall, so I was selling just Firewall, right? 
Now with the help of this SASE framework, I'm getting this opportunity to sell additional functionality or you can say additional licenses in the name of SD-WAN, right? So that's the reason all the OEMs or vendors, they are fighting to launch their, uh, you know, launch their own complete solution so that uh, customers should stick to them. They should not be, uh, you know, using the diverse solutions and, uh, uh, you know, they should not be doing their revenue shares among the multiple OEMs. So that's the uh, main agenda of ha having a single OEM solution. So if I will show you how a single OEM solution is going to look like, so it looked like something like this. So this is how your single OEM SASE solution is going to look like. We will be having these SD-WAN boxes on the offices, right? And we will be having some sort of client connectors in the mobile users. So uh, they will be connecting to their, uh, uh, you can say the data center SD-WAN boxes to access the internal applications. And they will be using the uh, cloud gateway services to access their applications on um, SaaS, platforms or you can say over internet right so this is how your single oem solution looks like when we talk about the integrated solution uh, you can integrate the multiple solutions together to uh, you know converge or you can start your uh, sas solution by integrating multiple solutions together so one example is like cisco sd wan plus z scaler you can integrate then we have cisco sd wan plus prisma access you can integrate Similarly, you can integrate Velu Cloud SD WAN plus Z Scaler. So multiple combinations you can make. Now uh, the question arises: Which one is best? Which combination is going to work? Because when you talk about integrated SaaS solution, it's like you need to uh, integrate two different solutions together, right? Although from technical standpoint, it is quite doable. There is no problem in that. But still, you know there are certain combinations which works seamless. Okay. So like Cisco SD-WAN active active setup works really well, you know, with the help of the T-Lock extension. But similarly, if you talk about Fortinet SD-WAN, the uh, active active setup doesn't work like that. And in fact, the uh, SD-WAN processing chip is not that uh, good as compared to Cisco or other OEMs, right? So when we talk about the integrated solution, you need to make sure that, uh, you know, you are using the right set of protocols when you are integrating your SD-WAN and SSE solutions. Okay, right set of protocol means which type of tunnels, you know, you are going to use be it IPsec tunnels or GRE tunnels, right? Uh, because each one of them has its own implication. So accordingly, you need to uh, select your, I mean, decide your traffic forwarding methods right whether you need to uh, go with the dedicated tunnels or you need to go with the uh, you know on demand tunnels how it is going to be okay so accordingly you need to design it and this is how it is going to look like so your internal applications will be accessed via sd wan fabric which you are going to build over the ills internet links so you know we are not going to use mpls anymore this is the industry's agenda but uh, I feel like for voice traffic, uh, MPLS is still uh, required for on-premise voice solutions. But uh, like you see, Teams is going over internet, Zoom is going over internet. So going forward, there will be no need for MPLS circuits anymore, right? But if you have the application where jitter latency matters a lot, then there will be a need for MPLS connectivity. Other, otherwise, you can definitely go with the ILLs and uh, you can use your ILL circuits to securely access your applications and for branch to branch communication, branch to user communication, branch to data center communication with the help of this fabric, which you are going to build over these ILLs. This fabric is nothing but, you know, the IPsec tunnels, which you are going to build between these boxes. This is for your private traffic. Now, if user would like to go over internet or would like to go over SaaS based platforms, then they will forward their traffic towards the respective Zscaler data center or Prisma access data center, or we can say the nodes, and then they will apply the uh, security posture. They will do the deep packet inspection. And then after inspecting the packet, they will forward it towards the internet or SaaS destination, wherever it was going. 
Okay, so this is how your integrated solution going to look like. When we talk about the industry use cases, you know, so this is uh, one of the use case of Prisma Access, where uh, it is a complete OEM solution. So for branches, we are using Prisma SD WAN box, and uh, for SSE, we are using Prisma Access service, right? So SD WAN box is going to build the tunnel with the RNSPN node, okay? And then we have the SC CAN connection with the data center firewall for this service connection. And mobile user is using the global protect client to connect to MUSPN node, right? So once you integrate all these services, now you can break out to internet with the help of this RNSPN node securely. It will do the inspection for your traffic. If you're if you're sitting here, you will send your internet bound traffic towards this RNSPN. It will do the inspection and then it will securely break it over the internet, right? Similarly, if you would like to access any application within your data center, this blue line is highlighting the uh, this uh, private traffic, right? So if you would like to access any internal application, then it will go securely over the remote network. It will hit this particular RNSP and then from here it will go to SCCAN and from there it will be forwarded towards your on-premise data center firewall and then it will reach the destination application. So this is how you have uh, combined your you know uh, network and security together okay so this sd wan box orchestration is also happening over cloud you are not doing it locally and your security posture is getting implemented with the help of this cloud it is not implemented at branch level so by doing this you save cost you uh, simplify your network right and uh, your network becomes highly scalable okay and it fits as per the current demand, right? So if user is working from home, they can securely connect to your data centers. They can securely go over the internet. Earlier, this was not the case. Due to pandemic, when everyone were, was forced to work from home, they used to connect to their VPN concentrators, or you can say the firewalls at branch locations. And then entire traffic of that particular laptop was hitting that particular security gateway and half of the traffic was going inside the data center and rest of the traffic was going towards the internet. So that was the major problem every company has faced, right? Because they were not prepared for that. Let's say I have 25,000 users. They were working from their respective branches. I have created the regional data centers, and then the uh, main global data center and I have established the B2B connections and then I was backhauling their traffic, right? And I was getting, uh, I was inspecting that particular traffic with the help of the security stack, uh, which is deployed in my global data center. But when the workforce moved from office to rem uh, home, they were connecting towards the particular data center and they were sending the unnecessary traffic. Let's say if user is browsing YouTube, the traffic was also hitting your uh, security gateway and it was you know, uh, increasing the CPU cycles and performance is issues were there, okay? So as a result, what we have done, we have implemented the split tunnel that only private traffic will come over the VPN adapter from the user laptop rest of the traffic will go direct over the internet by using the internet uh, connection. By doing this, it has exposed the user over internet and attackers got the opportunity to install the malwares in the user machine. And then that malware was free to move in, uh, you know, inside your network because you were getting the complete network access through the RA VPNs, right? And from there, we got this concept zero trust network access. In fact, at present, we don't even trust the employees, right? So zero trust network access means that you should have access to applications which you are authorized to. You should not get the complete network access, okay? And we should be uh, dividing or micro segmenting our network so that if any particular segment gets compromised as well, malware doesn't spread to the entire 
uh, infrastructure. Okay. So these are the industry use cases which we can have a look, which we can discuss, and you can also, uh, you know, discuss it with your customers if they are planning to go with these SASE solutions or they are planning for this digital transformation. You can tell them these pros and cons about it and you know whether it will be beneficial to go with single provider or it will be beneficial to integrate uh, uh, different OEMs, right? Another use case is from the Velo Cloud, you know, where they offer SD-WAN solution as well as this SSC solution as well. So you can see here that, you know, SD-WAN S device is connected with this uh, VMware SD-WAN gateway. So whatever traffic is getting generated from the branch location, it is getting inspected by the uh, SD-WAN. So basically you're getting the security services from the gateways, okay? And uh, SD-WAN box at branch is giving you the application aware routing. It is giving you more uh, SLA driven, you know, van selection. If your one of the ILL is not performing well, then it will automatically switch the business critical app to the highly performant link, right? So uh, there are multiple things which uh, SD WAN is going to offer along with the SSL solution. So this is the another industry use case from VMware, and the entire orchestration is happening through cloud. You need not to spin any management inside your uh, premise infrastructure. When we talk about the packet flow, so this is how your packet flow is going to look like. These are the branch users. So let me take the laser. So packet flow is going to look like this. These are the branch users which are connected with the help of the SD WAN box, right? So if they would like to access the internal applications, then they will directly connect to this SD WAN box in the data center and will uh, they will access the internal applications. But if they want to go over the internet or SaaS based applications, then they will send the traffic towards this SD WAN gateway. It will apply the uh, security stack, right? It will do the uh, URL based filtering, antivirus, anti malware, right? Whatever security offering it is uh, or subscription you have purchased, all these features will be uh, applied on your packet. And once your packet has been inspected, then it will be forwarded to the uh, target okay similarly when we discuss about the uh, user so let's say user is working from home or working from any cafe right so they will be having a certain client installed into their laptops which is going to connect them with the uh, secure access gateways right and uh, they will be sending their traffic to those gateways and if it is towards the internet and SaaS it will do the deep inspection and forward it towards that particular destination. If it is towards the data center, then it will forward it towards the data center. So this is how we have done the segmentation of your, uh, you can say your network. And we have also created the user-based policies and uh, you, you know, now users are only getting access to those applications which they are authorized to, okay? So, that's all about SASE. If you have any questions, I'm open to questions. Yeah, hey, Ron, in, in the Prisma Access uh, use case, mm -hmm. uh, right, um, if, like we have IPsec tunnel or the GRE tunnel to the cloud, Prisma Access cloud. In that case, um, how the site-to-site -site traffic will flow? See, so what happens, uh, you can have IPsec tunnels, you can have GRE tunnels with these respective security processing nodes. For site to site communication, or you can say branch to branch communication, Prisma offers one licensing, right? So that licensing you need to purchase from Palo Alto. And once you have that particular licensing and avail available, then these RNSPNs, they can communicate and you know by default your traffic will be, I mean, uh, you need not to modify any routing Okay, it is uh, already fully meshed connection at the Prisma backbone. So automatically your packets will be forwarded from one, one branch to another branch. So you just need a license. See, what uh, goal these OEMs are having, see, they want to simplify the routing. So what they are saying that you should only focus on security. You should not be concerned about routing, right? Either you can have a simple static route or you can use BGP as well. But these clouds which they are building, 
their core networking is based upon bgp they have complete connectivity with each other but you know they are playing smart for few services they are charging you know cost i mean you know, it's like for b2b communication in palo alto license cost is associated with it so like that it happens true true and and reason for asking this question is like um if we have direct tunnel to prisma access right if, if everything every traffic is following through prisma access even branch to branch then we can have a simple box right at the branch side we don't need any sd wan box for it is yeah it you can have it you can have it but okay, uh, so i will tell you one thing if you are going with the legacy uh, routers uh, normal plain vanilla cisco routers uh, you won't be getting services like application aware routing right load balancing for your uh, wan links right and you won't be do sla based monitoring of your wan links right because when we are shifting from mpls to ills uh, internet lease lines you cannot get the uh, you know uh, sla up times of up to 99.99% right it will be less than that and you cannot control the uh, uh, you can say the jitter latency all these metrics over ills so that's the reason you would need sd wan box absolutely absolutely so that's my point actually so i mean the, the what we feel that if we really want these this saas solution to work effectively then we have to have sd wan at least in the environment exactly. with the cloud security exactly Thank and you. that's the reason gartner has included it you know if you uh, check the gartner uh, reports prior to 2000, uh, 2020 you will see uh, they were calling z scaler and netscope solutions uh, as saas solutions right they have not included uh, sd wan into it but nowadays in the recent uh, reports you will see sd wan has been included and they have seen that it is the uh, requirement and without sd wan we cannot talk about secure network transformation yep thank you and and one more question um... Uh, rohan have we i mean there was there any kind of outage uh, in the cloud security like z scaler or prisma uh, and and reason for asking this question is do we really need to think for any kind of tertiary failover to to the internet traffic like if in case primary and secondary tunnel goes to the prisma access cloud do we really need to think for the tertiary connection for the internet traffic or relying on the complete saas solution or the ssc solution is 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 okay see it's like a uh, very nice question and it happens uh, with every cloud service provider these days in fact aws regions are going down right so gartner again saying that at present you cannot rely on one cloud service provider okay you should be taking multiple cloud services like if you are hosted your applications on aws then you should have backup on aws so that you know you should not be impacted from the region wise failures although region wise failures are very less now why i'm saying this why i'm connecting to aws or azure a reason being that these services be it prisma access z scaler they are implemented over these hyperscalers only right if z scaler says i have 150 plus data centers and i'm going to open up next 70 data centers in next quarter or something like that and i will be having 220 data centers across the globe it doesn't mean that z scaler is uh, opening the new sites right it means they have taken the infrastructure as a service and they have hosted their services on top of it right so if aws goes down there are chances z scaler can also go down there are chances prisma access can also go down right so these services are right. interlinked True. so in that case uh, you know whenever we design any saas solution for our customers what we do we create the uh, you know active tunnel with the active node let me just go back to this diagram so if you see here right so what we do just for the simplicity i have uh, created this diagram like that otherwise from branch you will have one active tunnel with this particular zen node and another standby tunnel with this particular zen node in fact 
you also get a requirement to do the load balancing on the uh, van links right so in that case you can run all these two tunnels in active active mode as well so it depends upon your requirement so it cannot be possible i mean the entire z scaler went down okay but yeah possibility is there it can happen but so far it 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 has not occurred anywhere if okay. one Thank one you. node goes down we have the backup available with us Got you. Thank you. Go on. Okay. Anything else, guys? I don't think we can decide. So can you yeah. please go back to that slide uh, in which you have taken the integrated solution of uh, single and this is called single and this thing? Yeah. So suppose we take one of the sites. So if user want to go to the internet traffic, then it will go via the this thing cloud to the IP support zone, whichever means of correct? Yeah, that's and correct. When he goes to, uh, and, and when he goes to, you can say the internal traffic. So then it will be uh, user will go via the SDN family, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, and when uh, we are having a remote user and like he's trying to access the resources, so in that case he's having a uh, you can say a client connector installed in, in his system, and uh, uh, suppose he are like he's trying to try to access the internet service, then it will go via the ZIE internet access uh, Z node, correct? See, and now you have guys. multiple options. Yeah, now you have multiple options for work from home. Okay, so either you can go with ZI and ZPA services from Zscaler for work from home, right? So ZI will provide you the secure internet access and ZPA will provide you the private access to your internal applications, right? This is one option you can go with. Or you can also do a hybrid uh, configuration here. So you can use the client connector of this uh, Cisco, let's say any connect I'm using for uh, internal application access and ZCC we are, I am using for internet access. So you can also do that. So if you want to have only single connector in your work from home user machine, then you can go with Zscaler solution. You can opt for ZI and ZPA services, but if you would like to have the uh, multiple combinations, so that is also possible. Okay. Thanks. Um, got it. Yeah, so if you go with the ZPA, then what do you need to do inside your data center? You need to spin up the app connector behind these SD-WAN boxes, right? And then this app connector will make the connection with the broker. And from there, user will make that connection with the broker. And then you know how ZPA works, right? Actually, I was under the impression that only for the uh, like let's say remote users, you can only use the ZIA and ZP. So I was wondering like how this SD-WAN fabric service came into the picture for the remote user. No, no, no. It is not mandatory that uh, you have to use ZI and GPA services all together. It, it depends upon your use case, right? And cost effectiveness. See, when we sell the solution, we sell it to the CXOs and they do this budgeting. They do this, uh, you know, negotiations because each project has its own budget allocated in any organization, right? So when we have budget constraints, then we do these sort of tweaks in the solution. Thanks, Ron. Yeah. Anything else, guys? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, it's a JAD scaler uh, get. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, in, in this uh, SD WAN gateway is uh, provided the full secure. If you suppose the branch user talk, uh, going the packet from the. Hey, gateway. Yeah. Yeah. Let me come to that point now. So when you talk about Fortinet. Palo Alto, Cisco, they have their own research teams. Cisco has its team called Talos. Fortinet is also having it. Palo Alto Unit 42 is there, right? So these teams, they are doing the research analysis on the malwares or you can say the viruses and they generate the signatures and populate that information to their uh, security devices, which you receive on periodic basis, right? app signatures, uh, virus signatures, you receive it uh, as a periodic update. But when we talk about these uh, SD-WAN OEMs, be it Versa, uh, your uh, Velo Cloud, they are not the core security providers, right? They are just giving you the security. It means they are taking it from somebody else, right? So in the back end, you will see that there's 
accepting the signatures from the security providers only be it Palo Alto or Fortinet. So they are accepting the signatures from there and then they are providing you the security services. So this is how it is working. So when we talk about secure SD-WAN or secure SASE solution, you know, uh, these OEMs like Versa or Value Cloud, they are not gaining market because of this drawback only, right? Because their security functionality is not up to that mark. I hope I'm able to answer your query. Yeah, actually in my network, in the, this or, uh, which organization I'm working now, same like uh, have a uh, Versa is and the Versa as the gateway. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, if you are suppose, uh, for my understanding, it's uh, not a secure gateway. It means like a secure network, right? No? Yeah, because you know you won't be getting the complete security. Although they they say that we have been uh, certified by this particular uh, agency, this particular agency for the security, and we are able to provide the next generation firewall features, but that is not the case, right? They lack in that, and that's the reason we go with these, uh, you know, hybrid or you can say these integrations, right? Where we take SD-WAN solution from one OEM and security solution from another OEM. After the gateway, we can use the software. Versa gateway or uh, whatever the SD-WAN gateway. The traffic should be, suppose that uh, edge, edge, SD-WAN edge to the SD-WAN gateway, then SASE can be deployed there. Is the See, SASE, like... SASE is a framework. Try to understand this. You know, when we say SASE, Secure Access Services, it is a framework. Framework means uh, you have a set of rules defined to do a job. Okay, so we call it a framework. So SASE is not a technology or it is not a uh, service, right? It is a framework under which you are collaborating multiple technologies together to work in a way you want to work it, right? So you can definitely connect with the SSE, that is a secure service edge, uh, be it Zscaler, Prisma Access. So from the gateways, you can have that connection. In fact, I tried it. Uh, I'll tell you my experience with uh, this particular model. So whenever you go with customer uh, workshops, you know, when you're selling any solution and you're doing the uh, workshops with the customer, they will ask you for multiple use cases. So I did this particular use case as well, where from VM, VMware Gateway itself, I have built the tunnels towards the Zscaler. But to be honest, the performance was pathetic, right? Mm -hmm. Because first my traffic was hitting the SD-WAN box, then it was going to the Gateway, and then mm -hmm. from Gateway, it was going to the Zscaler. So let me give you an example. Let's yeah, say I was thinking like that. Is that possible that uh, traffic? Yeah, it is possible, so. but let mm -hmm. me give you an example. Let's say a branch is in uh, somewhere in Africa, okay? And in Africa, we face, uh, you know, multiple challenges over internet. So let's say your gateway pop is in Sao Paulo and your location is in Brazil and uh, the nearest data center for Zscaler would be somewhere around within 100 kilometers. But due to this design, now what will happen from branch your packet will travel to 5,000 kilometers towards the Sao Paulo. And from there, it will travel back to the Zscaler data center in Brazil, and then it will go to the internet. So you can visualize how much latency we have increased by this model. Yes. Right? So that's the yeah. reason, uh, you know, we need to calculate these round trip times and how my packet mm -hmm. will be uh, routed over the locations, right? Because See, 150 locations, if Zscaler is claiming, it means they are not going to have multiple pops uh, mm -hmm. in every country, okay? Mm -hmm. There are multiple countries where we don't have Z, uh, Zscaler presence, okay? So in that case, we would be connecting to the pops outside the country. Then we face other, another challenges, you know, uh, website languages are in different language and, uh, you know, let's say government websites are not working due to uh, geo IP location because user IP is coming from a different company. Although user is sitting in a diff uh, in a same country, but my IP is getting translated because of this SSE pop. So there are multiple use cases. And and what is the solution in that case then, uh, Rowan? If, if... 
the multiple solutions are again available so if you talk about z scaler they will give you the uh, you know v edge solution they will give you these v zens and they they give you p zens private zens you know hardware boxes okay. you can have it in your in on premise right so then they okay. offer uh, solutions like that and when we talk about china market so you know in china you see how controlled internet uh, is right so there you have multiple solutions as per the china government compliance policy absolutely see when you are designing the solution for your customer you need to make sure that you are going to increase their performance their application mm. should perform really well they should have complete mm. visibility of the applications of the users of the threats right and you should not have any dark spot inside your network okay you should have the complete visibility no shadow i uh, shadow it application should be there in your environment so you know when we sit with the customer team we need to do the brainstorming we need to have these workshops to identify how your current infrastructure has been built right how it is working today what are the drawbacks associated with it and when we go with this particular network transformation how it is going to benefit you right and what would be the best use case for you because when you talk about multi cloud uh, half of the applications are hosted in aws half of the applications are hosted in azure right then how you will uh, interconnect them so we have one uh, solution from uh, this particular startup i'm forgetting the name it was quite uh, familiar i mean if you guys remember it for cloud to cloud communication we have this particular startup avatrix you're talking about avatrix yeah so they have uh, you know developed the solution for multi cloud uh, communication so like that i mean see you have a problem you have a solution for that it is just that you need to have knowledge on that particular thing that's it anything else one last question from my side uh, rohan um, for for the side to side communication uh, prisma access can provide that uh, uh, functionality uh, using the interconnect license yep. is there any other ssc vendor which can uh, provide uh, this kind of uh, traffic flow or the communication see z scaler uh earlier was not providing such uh, communication but now they are also into it right i told you right they are also investing in sd wan now right uh -huh. so we will be having these branch connectors uh, so far you have seen z scaler client connector only so similarly they are developing the branch connector with which would have these uh, uh, sd wan capabilities as well as it will also enable the branch to branch communication okay so it is in work Thank in progress sort of thing not uh, official yet understood thank you thank you ron yeah anything else guys that video will be uploaded there no over youtube it will be uploaded okay so that's it okay. Uh, one more request if you are uh, such kind of a uh, meeting uh, in a future uh, uh, doing like that now that will be better for us for understanding and confusion that of things yeah so uh, i'm just going to give you an update on that so mm -hmm. these webinars now going to be frequent okay mm -hmm. so because you know people are buying my courses and mm -hmm. i can understand that these are the recorded courses and if you have doubts you have queries you know you connect me over chat i'm able to answer but still you need a connect with me okay so that's mm -hmm. the only purpose of these uh, these webinars so it will be frequent going forward and uh, whatever new technology you want to learn you can share with me right and i'll try if i can make a course on that and i can help you with that anything else guys thank you norwan thank you you have been very helpful thanks a lot yeah. for that
yeah. okay guys so thank you so much for your time uh, we'll try to connect again uh, probably next to next weekend i will plan another webinar on ztna right and we will discuss it in more details thank you rohan uh, there's one last question like uh, is this video will be available on ng cloudx like uh, where we have bought some zi or zps solution from you yeah this yeah so it will be uploaded over youtube right so okay. you can watch it from there okay thank see ng cloudx app is hosted on aws right so we have uh, this bandwidth limitation there <laughs> so that streaming cost is associated with it so okay. over youtube we can host it for free so that's the reason free material goes on youtube and paid material goes on uh, on our app thank you ron thank you for this information yeah okay guys any feedback you would like to give any improvement you think i should be taking care of going forward Oh, silence means it was very good. Yeah, it's all it good. Was, it was, it was really very good, Rohan, and uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, looking forward this, looking forward uh, the same type of uh, technical information or the webinars from you, Rohan. Sure. Thanks a lot for that. Sure. sure. Thanks for the feedback. So, thank you for your time, guys. I'm closing this webinar. I will upload the video, and we will try to connect in future webinars. Sure. Thank you, Rohan. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.